the heart of your teams. The heart of Atlanta. Valley Sports South and Valley Sports Southeast. The heart of the fan. On 9-11, we stand united. Never forget. World champion Atlanta Braves baseball is presented by Truist and this afternoon from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. It's the third final in rubber game of our set between two playoff hopeful clubs, the Braves and the Seattle Mariners. Hi again, everybody. Chip Carey, Jeff Rancourt. Glad to have you with us on this late summer Sunday. Partner, the Braves have split the first two games with the M's, but perhaps the tonic for a series win is on the mound for the Mariners. Marco Gonzalez is pitching, and oh, by the way, he's left-handed. Yeah, that's good news for this Braves offense, who's 3-0 so far in this road trip against the lefties. And really, since the All-Star break, they have been crushing lefties at a great pace. You see the numbers speak for themselves. A right-handed heavy lineup for the Braves sets up well. And then, of course, when you have Matt Olson, Michael Harris, who hit lefties great too, really does a trick for them. And on the inside, it'll be nice. You got Jake Odorizzi getting the ball for the Braves today. Has not started since August 28th, had a little bit of a tired arm. But before that, you can see he had two really good starts for the Braves after struggling a couple. And has pitched three times against the Mariners this year, 13 and two-thirds scoreless right now. So hopefully it lines up for a Braves win and a Braves series win. And think about this, Matt Olson. Hits lefties well, six career homers against Marco Gonzalez. Hopefully that trend continues in the rubber game of this series. We will have more from Seattle on this September 11th, 2022. The Braves and the M's wrap up our three-game series today here on Valley Sports.
changed our way of life forever. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. There was no precedent for such a tragedy on American soil. So Major League Baseball suspended all games indefinitely while our nation grieved and tried to make sense out of what had happened. Six days later, a familiar face appeared with words of encouragement. The President of the United States has said it is time to go back to work. And so, despite a heavy heart, baseball gets up out of the dirt, brushes itself off, and will follow his command, hoping in some small way to inspire the nation to do the same. And then another baseball legend confirmed that it was time to play. I don't know about you, but as for me, the question has already been answered. Should we be here? Yes. There was magic in the air. It is goosebumps at the Metrodome as baseball begins again. And when Mike Piazza stepped up to the plate during the first game back in New York, there were fireworks. Lopez wants it away. And it's hit deep to left center. Andrew Jones on the run. This one has a chance. Home run. Mike Piazza and the Mets lead three to two. And before game three of the World Series, the president gave us all something to cheer about. I was, uh, you know, loosened up and Derek Jeter came in. He said, hey, Mr. President, you gonna be throwing from the mound or from the, you know, from the front of the mound? I said, what do you think, Derek? He said, throw from the mound. And please welcome the President of the United States. The energy and the crowd and the noise was really, really uh, powerful. The place went nuts. All of us just kind of looked at each other and like, that was pretty freaking cool. And I don't think I've ever seen uh, a country more unified than it was right then and there. Though our country suffered tremendously, let's remember how we all stood together to create an even stronger America. 9-11, never forget. None of us will ever forget the events of that dreadful day 21 years ago. As we join you from T-Mobile Park in Seattle, we shall not forget the heroism shown by our public servants in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, Washington, D.C., and New York City. As we greet you for Braves and Mariners baseball, Jeff Rancourt, the third final and rubber game of this series on a beautiful afternoon day here in the Pacific Northwest. The Braves come into play today one half game behind the New York Mets Braves dropped a 3 1 decision here last night and with this Toyota starting lineup we'll try to win the series outright Ronald Acuna Junior will once again lead off the Toyota starting nine Dansby Swanson second Austin Riley third we mentioned in our opening comments Matt Olson hits left handers very well Marco Gonzalez in particular six career homers for Matt Olson against the Mariners starter whom we've seen before in a Seattle uniform Jeff it's been a while 
but this former Cardinal, a double-digit winner, but also a double-digit loser here in 22 for the M's. Yeah, but also feels like for him he's coming off <clears throat> some pretty good starts. You see his last four starts, 3-1 and one with just under a three. But with that being said, like you said, the Braves have really done a great job against left-handed pitching. So hopefully they can get after today. And as you said, Matt Olson, six home runs against Gonzalez in his career. This has really been a fun series. Electric atmosphere, perhaps an October preview for Brian Snicker and Scott Services Club. With that in mind, to win this series and have a happy flight to San Fran, what are your Ford keys? Well, get a few guys on and get Matt Olson up. Six home runs, likes hitting here. And for Jake Odorizzi coming back today, continue the good work. You're coming off two good starts that you had before the tired arm. And at the same time, he's one and one with a two this year in three starts against the Mariners. And he's got 13 and two thirds consecutive scoreless. So good chance to get off to a good start today for this Braves club. So as this packed house continues to file in at T-Mobile Park, a lot of Braves fans in attendance. It was a raucous atmosphere here last night. Figure to be more of the same today, and hopefully Ronald Acuna Jr. can get things started with a bang for the Braves here in the first inning. Ronald looking for his second hit of the series. He enters play today with a 270 season batting average. Marco Gonzalez goes to work. And the first one is whacked back to the screen, and we are underway. No wind to speak of on a 73 degree day. And the smoke has kind of cleared some today, so much better day. Gonzalez back to work. And a breaking ball missed inside. The smoke Jeff was alluding to. Huge wildfires north of Seattle all the way up to the Canadian border, and that smoke has really enveloped the entire Puget Sound area. And some difficulties with pop ups last night. Hopefully none for the Braves and Mariners here today. <laughs> One ball two strikes for Ronald who takes upstairs and an even count at two and two. Braves are having a great month. They're seven and one in September. Looking for win number 88 today. And that's pulled foul. On the ground to short. Crawford bobbles, can't recover. He made an error last night. And he's made a first inning error today, so a good start for Atlanta. Yeah, he made the error last night that if it wasn't for Munoz coming in doing such a good job, really could have cost the Mariners last night a Taylor made double play ball. But for the Braves, good start. So the threat of speed forced Crawford to hurry his routine on that ground ball. Let's see if the Braves can chase Ronald home here in the first inning. Dansby's had a super road trip. Three multi hit games on the West Coast so far. One of those multi hit games came last night. In fact, Dansby had two of the Braves' team three hits. That's how good George Kirby and the Mariners' bullpen was last night. But a new day today for the Brave shortstop, who's hit a homer in this series as well. It's 0 and 2. Short lead at first for Ronald. And Dansby fortunate to foul that off. He chased, but got a piece, and we'll see another pitch. That's where we've seen Dansby sometimes, though, chip at his best when he's able to fight, fight like this. You can see they're not playing as big a shift here in Seattle, what we're used to seeing. See Frazier over a little bit, but not by a whole bunch.
Chased a high fastball, and there's out number one in the first inning. Gonzalez is not a big strikeout guy. He's averaging a strikeout about every two innings, but a big one there, four out number one, and that brings up Austin Riley. Riley with 73 extra base hits. He's had a quiet series so far in Seattle. See if he can change that as the sun tries to peek through the haze. The pitch is fouled at the plate. There's the arsenal for the Seattle left hander who originally came to the big leagues with the Cardinals. St. Louis traded him to Seattle for Tyler O'Neill a couple of years ago. Gonzalez in the top 12 in franchise strikeouts in Mariners history. One ball one strike. Cunha and Santana, Santana, I should say, standing over at first base, and that's off the mask of Cal Rally. Been the Iron Man behind the plate in this series for the Mariners. A ball and two strikes. Yeah, you don't think this is an important time of year? He's back behind the plate today in a day game. As you know, trying to catch, pass, and stay ahead of the Mets in the East. We're a half game behind New York. To Jeff's point, the Mariners are only one game out of the top wild card spot in the American League. So a lot for both clubs to play for on this Sunday afternoon. The pitch is high, full count. And you tell for Seattle, go ask any of these Braves players. I was talking to some last night and this morning about what a just home field advantages is all the way up here so if they could host a wild card it's a lot big advantage for them let's see if Ronald's running with one out Gonzalez doesn't even look at him he holds and the pitch popped up foul off to the right and we'll try again for Austin Riley the Braves MVP candidate here in the top of the first inning. Scott service seventh year as the Seattle manager. It's been over two decades since the Mariners were in the playoffs. Ronald leads the pitch. Slowly hit towards second Acuna is going to stop now they've got him in a rundown between first and second. Riley is out at first Ronald slips and falls. And it's an unconventional double play to end the Atlanta first inning. Nothing happening in the Braves first. Jake Odorizzi goes to work in a scoreless game.
61 as we told you they are one game out of the top wild card spot in the American League their rookie of the year candidate is Julio Rodriguez atop their Toyota starting lineup Cal Raleigh leads all big league catchers in homers Carlos Santana hit a couple of bombs in game one of this series and as Jeff said in our opening comments it's been a while since Jake Odorizzi has pitched for the Braves but when he's seen the Mariners he's been very very effective. He has I'm pitched since the 28th but with that being said two good effective outings before that his arm should have a good rest and again has had good numbers against this Seattle Mariners team this year 13 and two thirds scoreless right now consecutive. Older is he five and five on the year a three ninety earned run average his last outing was against the Cardinals. He had five and two thirds innings of no hit ball before St. Louis put together four hits and then Snit got him out of the game he's been dealing with some arm fatigue that first pitch and some good velo but missed upstairs for Julio Rodriguez fly ball well hit right Grossman back as far as he can go it's a leadoff homer. Talked on the pregame about two of the best center fielders in baseball right now, Rodriguez for them and Michael Harris for the Braves, and these guys have put on a show. We saw the power last night when he split that gap in here, opposite field. Just a fastball up in the zone. His 69th RBI, his 50th extra base hit. And the last Mariner rookie with 50 extras. Ichiro Suzuki. So it's one nothing in the first inning. On a Julio Rodriguez solo home run. And Mitch Hanniger is the hitter. Hanniger, 0 for 6 in the series. So that ends the scoreless streak for Jake against Seattle. Let's hold him to one. As this one's popped up right side, Matt Olson gives chase. And into the middle of the warning track one last peek in front of the camera well for out number one. Here's a Eugenio Suarez his power stroke has gotten hot when the M's have needed it hasn't it. Yeah he got Max Reed on a first pitch fastball up in the zone and went dead center. Really impressive last night. Talk about a high strikeout guy but also. Can hit the long ball. He's two homers away from 30 home runs in his last four full major league seasons. They're not counting the COVID year, of course. The only other player to do that is Paul Goldschmidt, who's another National League MVP candidate. So A. Eugenio Suarez, former Red, now a Mariners star. 1 0 pitch. One and two for the Seattle third baseman. Cal Raleigh, the catcher, waits next. The Mariners strike on Julio Rodriguez's third leadoff homer of the year. Got good velo, but can't get the ball down yet. It wasn't fun last night with all those Braves fans here, though, starting to do the tomahawk chop and the Mariners fans. We walked home last night, Braves fans everywhere here in the Northwest. That's been great to see. Well, the World Champs fan base travels as that's taken inside for Suarez, ball four. One in, one on, one out for Cal Raleigh.
Boy, that didn't miss by much, I'll nope. tell you that. Raleigh's from Braves Country. Smoky Mountain High School in Cullowee, North Carolina. Third round pick by Seattle. He had an 0 for last night against Max Free, Jesse Chavez, and Kirby Yates. Don't get cheated. They've hit 165 homers as a team. We told you Raleigh with 23 of them. Mariners have three switch hitters and two left handers in the lineup here for game three. Raleigh, the first of those switch batters, the pitch. I thought it was interesting talking to a lot of the reporters, TV people here in Seattle. They were saying we try to kind of Almost make our team a little bit like y'all's chip and the fact that they're trying to have good pitching, good defense, which they've done this year, and then hit for power like this. One ball, one strike. Well, it is a copycat league, isn't it? Yeah. And Oda Rizzi having trouble getting ahead of these hitters. More balls than strikes in the first 13 pitches in the inning. Molly one for eight in the series. Let's see if Jake can get a double play ball here. In one. Three quarters of the way into the upper deck, but about 95 feet foul. Maybe more than that. <laughs> Full count. That would be the definition of getting the head out. So Jake's back within a strike of getting the second out of the inning. Suarez a short lead and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Pull the string, and Raleigh is out number two. And here is Santana. He's playing first base today. Man, what a beautiful pitch. A little higher up than Jake wanted to, but with that being said, the change of speed. It's a good jab after you saw Raleigh get the head out like that, really coming after a fastball, took advantage of that. Good pitch selection. Carlos Santana another switch hitter batting left handed here the Braves have a shift on for him Vaughn Grissom the rover in shallow right. As Jake turns it loose and it's hit right to Grissom on a big hop. And the flip to first is in time and that retires the side Seattle gets a leadoff homer and they take a one nothing lead into the second inning here at T-Mobile Park.
One inning at home this afternoon, but one run shouldn't be a problem for Snit squad because they've been road warriors, as you see on our Zaxby's indescribably good play. You see that record second in the NL. They're tied with the Brewers for the most home runs on the road. And they're 13 and 3 in their last 16 road games. And you know as well as I do, when you're in a pennant race, man, the ability to win on the road like that is huge. Well, here's the matchup we previewed in our opening comments. Matt Olson versus Marco Gonzalez. Matt with six career homers among 11 hits against Marco head to head. So, you know, Matt knows that. Yeah. And you know, Gonzalez knows it too. I was going to say, I have a feeling he's very aware. Did you have a guy that you just owned? Like this, as far as power was concerned. Yeah, there were a couple guys that you just—I'm not going to call them out. <laughs> Why not? You know, I mean, that's not proper because there's plenty of guys that own me. Trust me. But yeah, there's guys that you knew when you got up there. Boy, you had a feeling there was going to be a good day. One-two pitch, and a little roller foul. Come on, you got to tell us who it is. Yeah, you know, I can't. John Land and Rick Porcello. Sorry, did you say something? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the baseball game. But it is funny, right? There's it always is. there's always one or two guys, right? And that works the other way. You ask Tom Glavin about Mike Redmond, and Mike starts. Oh. Tom starts twitching. It's just I don't even want to talk about him. Yeah, I remember one of the two, Matty Diaz versus Johan Santana. I mean, hit like 420 off him mm. or something, 430. On the ground into the shift, and Olsen's going to be retired. And Gonzalez has out number one here in the second. William Contreras is the Braves' catcher today. He's up next. Seventeen homers for William trying to get to the 20 home run mark or more. That's his pace. The last brave catcher with 20 homers Brian McCann. Will hit 24 of them. And in for a strike. Him and Darno both. Knocking on that 20 home run door. His catching core has been outstanding. And I'll say how big it is too because you're able to rest those guys. You know, you're not wearing a guy out for 125 games. You get to that postseason and, you know, they're tired. Instead of that, for this Braves team, both these catchers are still relatively fresh. On the ground to short, Crawford handles this one cleanly and gets his man by a step. Two outs. And Vaughn Grissom is the hitter. Grissom moves up to the sixth spot in the lineup. Why? Well, he's having a good road trip. In fact, he's having a good week. Hitting 400 this week with a couple of homers, six RBIs, and four extra base hits. You know, so funny. It reminds me so much of Brian McCann and myself, where a lefty, Vaughn hit six, Michael Harris hit seventh, and versus righty, they flop them again. And both guys have just done great work at the bottom part of this lineup. The ability to score at any point is so big. Especially when you get into the postseason. We saw that last year having a deep lineup. Didn't mean to, as that's fouled away. What's been so impressive to me about Vaughn and Michael Harris is the moment has not been too big for them. They do not play or act like rookies. Yeah. So Grissom's got some heavy lifting to do here with two strikes. You'll see another pitch. One ball, two strikes, you count. Chase that one, and Gonzalez has a one, two, three second inning. He's got a pair of strikeouts and a one nothing lead.
Uh, Julio Rodriguez leadoff home run. Jacob Rizzi on the mound for Atlanta. Let's talk about the Braves starting staff. That is brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. It's our beating the pressure feature. Yeah, see the numbers. Top three in the NL in all those categories and strike starters are striking out 27 percent of batters face best in all of baseball. Well, Rizzi has a strikeout in his first inning. He'll face Adam Frazier who played late last night. He earned a two out walk that turned into a big insurance run for Seattle. Adam's a local kid who's and with the Pirates San Diego now Seattle and as I said last night truly a tough man for the Braves to get out a career 300 hitter against his big league hometown team. And he does it again with a leadoff single to start the second inning. So two leadoff men in as many innings aboard for Seattle. Frazier at first in front of Jesse Winker. This guy's been a nice fit for the Mariners. 13 homers, 79 walks. So he's not just up there wailing away. He was an all star with the Cincinnati Reds a couple of years ago when Cincinnati started cutting payroll. They sent Winker and Suarez. Out to the Pacific Northwest. Frazier a good lead at first not going and fouled back it's nothing in two. The lights are on here at T-Mobile Park again with the haze and smoke in the Puget Sound area trying to help the defenders see as clearly as possible. There's some blue sky overhead but it is still a very hazy day here. It should be much easier to see the baseball this time of day than it was last night around 7 o'clock local time. And upper deck out of play. It's wow. 0 and 2. Steve Schatz, our audio director here today in Seattle, and that was a shot of those wildfires taken from his flight into town yesterday. And all that smoke is. Enveloping metropolitan Seattle. So thank you Steve for that. No balls two strikes. Not a 50 50 split for Jake balls and strikes. Everything's been up. Now the count one and two. Up again, two balls, two strikes. At the belt and Winker knew it. So he was caught with his hand in the cookie jar for out number one. Yeah, that was kind of an awkward one. That was a, just a change up. He must have been looking for something else because it kind of hung. Nonetheless, got the strikeout. That'll bring up J.P. Crawford, the eighth place hitting shortstop for the Mariners. Crawford batting 252 on the year. It has one hit in the series.
was a good pitch down in the zone. And Crawford took it for a called strike. Runner goes, pitch high, the Contreras throw on the money, and not in time. Dansby's point right away, though. For the moment, Frazier is safely in at second base. Swipe tag by Swanson. Did he get the hand? Oh, yeah, I think he got him right on the forearm before the hand got there, Chip. Oh, the right hand on that corner of the bag. We'll see if the Braves challenge. The swim move might have saved Frazier. It does not look like the Braves will argue to call it second. I think it's one of those that so close you don't know, and the last thing you can to me at that point is lose that challenge this early. So RBI chance for the Seattle shortstop, JP Crawford. Stolen base number nine for Adam Frazier. And it's served to the left side. Riley, long throw to first, and that holds the runner. Crawford tried to shoot that gap between the shortstop and third baseman, but Riley in the right place, and that's out number two. Right now, Jake, the pitch he's getting these guys out with, and maybe you're seeing it because of Max Fried last night, but it's been that changeup. We saw Max get a lot of swing and misses. Kirby Yates, same thing coming in with that split. And I wonder, Jeff, if it's a matter of just throwing enough pitches to get a feel for a touch yeah. pitch after the time that well, Jake has had off. Yeah, and you think, I mean, the one run he gave up today was for first pitch of the game, kind of welcome back before you knew it, but since then he's kind of settled in. This is Sam Haggerty. He's hitting over 300 over the last month for the Mariners. He made a circus catch in foul ground here last night. And didn't get that. Strike one. He ran a lot yes. down the left field line here yesterday. Haggerty was with the Mets and was waived. Seattle claimed him, and now here he is. Five homers, 16 runs batted in, and another Mariner switch hitter. Lifted softly toward short, but Dansby will retreat. He'll call for the fair catch. And Odorizzi works around a leadoff second inning single. Michael Harris leads off for the Braves. It's 1 0, Mariners in front.
Nine hitters for the Braves all year have done a great job of feeding the top of Brian Snitker's lineup card. Let's check that out. Our stats with Lowe's features the seven, eight, nine hitters. Yeah, the top two, and then now in all those categories, you see the bottom part of the lineup. And from the ninth spot in the order, it still amazes me. Ninth spot, 22 home runs and 86 RBIs. <laughs> How would you like that to have that hit in ninth in your lineup? Most teams don't even have that in three or four. Nope. So that's the unenviable task for Marco Gonzalez, who's been staked to a one nothing lead. And he misses inside for Michael Harris. The Braves have gone on a great roll since. Michael Harris joined this club out on the West Coast. He and Vaughn Grissom have been a great lift. Grissom and the Braves 22 and 6 since Vaughn took over at second base. Once Arcia got hurt. And you know what the Braves have done since June 1 yeah. with Michael Harris in the outfield. Very simple motion for Marco Gonzalez. And this one is rolled slowly toward first. It's going to curl foul before Santana can get there. And the count is two and two. Would it be a fair comparison, Jeff, to say that Gonzalez, at least so far in this game, is a left handed version of George Kirby, who pitched last night? It, with the other exception, besides the handedness, Kirby throws a little harder than this guy? Yeah, Kirby definitely throws, but. You can see they're working in out. Mm -hmm. I mean that's how especially Gonzalez for him. He doesn't have quite the fastball power that Kirby does so they got to live somewhat on the edges. Two balls two strikes. And Michael went fishing up and out of the zone. That is strikeout number three. For a man that doesn't average a strikeout per inning. Gonzalez off to. A flying start here in the third inning with Marcelo Zuna coming up. Twenty one home runs for Marcel Ozuna. One here would tie it up. Well, we've seen him lately. Start to get going a little bit, get a little hotter in what he's been doing, been going to right center field. Two balls and a strike. Robbie Grossman will follow here in the Atlanta third. Two up, two down. Three straight strikeouts for Gonzalez. Change up away, heater in. Be interested to see the second time through the lineup coming up, what kind of adjustments they make after seeing him. It's what they faced him one time, but it was all the way back in what, 17 or 18, I think? Yeah, it's been a while, right after yeah. he came over from the Cardinals. Yeah. A lot of these guys in this lineup have never seen them. Roddy Grossman takes a strike. Had a big hit game here the other night. Went three for four.
Ooh. I don't know about that one. He's been around the plate the whole game and got that call from Bruce Dreckman. Grossman didn't like that. Back our way and off to the right. And the radio booth got another one. Now last night Dansby Swanson hit a foul ball that went right between Ben Ingram and Joe Simpson yeah. dented the wall. Put a wall hole in it. There's Ben right there. Look at him. He caught it. Man. Smoked foul to the left side. Get the feeling if we're going to get one, this is it. You you are in prime <laughs> territory. Don't let us down. Don't worry. Okay, if it's coming at your face, I'll catch it. <laughs> it's your money maker. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> one and two bases empty. <laughs> With Seattle up by a run. To third. Suarez with the peg to first in time. And the Braves are held without a hit the first time through the order. Seattle leads 1 0, and Rodriguez is coming up next. Third, Jake Odorizzi making his first start this afternoon in two weeks, as you heard the guys mention. And in catching up with him earlier this week, you know, he talked about that arm fatigue he was feeling in St. Louis. And he said the best way to describe it, sluggish. And with the way the schedule lined up, a couple days off, he said the best thing to do, big picture, skip that start, keep everybody else on a normal schedule. And he goes, I wasn't overly concerned. I could have pitched through it. But the biggest problem with doing that, he said, guys, is that he would have to overexert himself to just get what's normal for him as far as velo and movement and all of that. And he goes, that can be really counterintuitive when it comes to your mechanics, which of course is something he has worked so hard this season already and trying to get himself back on track. So that was one of the things he said. It just made sense. Skip that one start. Try to keep yourself on track as far as mechanics go. And that's kind of what I think we're keeping an eye on here this afternoon. I think Kelly too, when you talk about it, they've been able to do that because of the depth that we've had down in the minor league. Having guys come up, Bryce Elder, Kyle Muller that other time, and fill the role, it gives you a chance. They did it with Kyle Wright pushing him back, and it paid huge dividends for him. Well, Rodriguez off to a good start today. He's homered and now singled. 
Seattle's had the leadoff man in all three innings of today's game. And here is Mitch Hanniger, who popped out in foul ground his first time up. But let's not forget, Odorizzi missed 42 games with a lower leg injury. He injured himself in mid May in Boston while with the Astros. That was close. He came back on the 4th of July after two rehab starts. The Braves acquired him after he beat Seattle on, excuse me, after the Astros beat Seattle on July 31st to pitch seven innings of two hit ball in that game. So I wonder if he's going through the old proverbial dead arm. Thing that pitchers talk about in spring training. Sorry to interrupt, but this is where the new rules we talked about yesterday, like you don't like it. If I'm right, right now yeah. he can't throw over. He can't. So what would you expect Rodriguez to do if this was well? To me, not even they. You just keep getting a big lead, right? It was announced on Friday that Major League Baseball's rules committee will have a pitch clock next year. They will ban defensive shifts. By that I mean two designated defenders on each side of second base that will have to be on the infield dirt you won't be able to line up as the Braves are in this spot and more importantly after two throws over to first if they're unsuccessful you can't throw over a third time I would imagine as you said last night and I thought about it as well I think that's the one that probably would get tweaked or maybe changed God, I would hope so I just think that's got too much of a you know you make the bags a little bigger it's fine you know like I said the pitch clock you've kind of guys have known if that one it's a little like you take away the integrity of the game for me one ball one strike for Hanniger. Runner goes, got a good jump from the knees. Contreras' throw, got him on the back leg. What a beautiful throw from the knees. Oh, yeah. They got him. So Rodriguez thrown out for the seventh time. Strong arm of Contreras and a good sweep tag by Grissom. Boy, he got rid of that ball quick. So big when you can be able to have a catcher like that that can do that and get the pitcher back with one out now. And back to the windup for Hanniger. The pitch is fouled back. It's two and two. So you like the rules changes? You like what baseball is trying to do, with the exception of the throw over one that I we do. just discussed? Yeah, I really do. And a swing and a miss for out number two. I think it'll be fascinating to see how teams structure their rosters. I think Kelly it'll be fun to see how the guys who have to move into the shift react next year when they don't get all their steps in. Before <laughs> That's the third exactly end. what I asked Austin Riley about and he goes listen I'm not going to be upset about it I'll find a different way to get my steps in but his biggest thing about the shift has always been the extremes and he goes I understand two players on each side but I just feel like you got need to be in the dirt but he goes I know lefties are going to love it. I know Olsen is pumped about it um, but he also talked about the shorter games you think about less time on your feet body feels better and you recover a little quickly he goes I have no problem with that so I think as far as the pitch clock goes he's kind of looking forward to that one and we know well the shift you know he'll get his steps other where yeah and look we've talked about this you know numerous times all of us together and I said more of than anything for the shift for me part of me was like okay play where you want but wherever you start the batter you got to stay there mm -hmm. like the idea yeah. of Austin Riley running from third base with two strikes now all the way back over I it just to me it takes away from it that's you know just play ball more after a 2 0 pitch for a Eugenio Suarez who walked his first time up one nothing Seattle their run came in the first inning it's two balls and a strike the fans will say well look we're kind of dumbing the game down right if 
a defense wants to shift and put four defenders on the yep. side of the infield. Why can't a hitter just shoot the ball the other way? You have said for many years it's just not that easy. It isn't. And it's not so much that the hitters don't want to make adjustments sometimes, but I've told you this before. I don't mind Matt Olson going the other way sometimes. I also want to see Matt Olson swing the bat. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and take some big swings. That's I mean, that's what you know, and to me sometimes you can defeat the purpose of doing that. I see it both ways, like I said, but. Oh, that was just above the letters, I suppose, for a full count. And it's not time of game, it's pace of game. Yeah. It's about the action in the game, and those are the things that baseball is trying to improve on and get away from the three outcome sport that we've seen for the last decade or so. Homer walk and strikeout. Look, last night, two hour, what, 48, 49 minute game. It was a great pace. Yep. It was good action, good pitching, some good. That's what you want to see. And sometimes to me, you get dragging in these games three hours and 40 minutes. And it's, and I'm not just saying that from a broadcaster, but your kids being at the park or families coming to watch, it can get tough sometimes. So I think all that will really help the pace of the, play, of the game, bring a lot of fans. Mile high pop up. The Braves were in a shift. Grossman's coming in from right and he and Grissom collide. Vaughn is down in a heap in shallow right field. He might have taken an elbow on that catch in right for the third out of the inning. Braves training staff is going to have to go out and attend to Vaughn Grissom who did not hear Robbie Grossman coming on to make the catch for the final out of the inning. This looked like Grossman's right knee might have hit Grissom's knee. While the Braves medical staff attends to Vaughn Grissom, we'll take a break and tell you what they're checking next. Looks like Von Grissom, we might have dodged a bullet there, Chip, as we saw him get up and run off. He just kept going and going, and obviously Grossman camped out there. And he went right for that right knee. Watch him. See how he grabs it right when he went to the ground? So keep an eye on Grissom's right knee right here. Kind of took it right in the back of his leg. And while the foot was planted, the knee looked to give way just did, a bit. Yeah. And he was on the turf for a few minutes and then was able to get up, bend his knees like in a catcher's crouch, and then was able, Jeff, to jog off the field under his own power. But what did I say to you? What we were just talking about before the inning with the shift. Uh, you take that away, that stuff's not going to happen. You got people going everywhere playing different positions. Not that you see that every game, but the way he ran off, hopefully, he dodged the bullet, man. Ozzy coming back the way Grissom swinging the bat. That's the last thing you want to do right now is lose someone on a 
lazy pop-up like that. So hopefully he's running around fine. So to the fourth we go. Ronald Acuna Jr. leads off. He reached on a Crawford error. And then on Austin Riley's ground ball was caught in a rundown that turned into an inning ending double play back in the first. And that's upstairs. Kelly, did you see anything with Vaughn when he got back to the bench? Well, when he came down here in the dugout, you know, he kind of had this wry smile on his face. But George Poulos did say, hey, come on, I want to check you out. And kind of they just went inside the clubhouse. But I think, you know, he's going to try to continue this play. But I kept watching him kind of grab sort of the upper left collarbone area, which, again, I don't know that that's anything. And I don't want to speculate. But I'm sure Robbie Grossman's hitting you full on. <laughs> he's not a tiny guy out there. So I'm sure he's just a little shaken up right now. But I know Poulos wanted to check him out. And we'll see if he comes back out here. I'll let you guys know. Thanks Kelly one ball two strikes and Ronald fouls it back. She made a good point I think that's a pretty stout guy he's running into too. And Grossman was just camped out. Gonzalez back to work. Braves have had one base runner. It was Ronald. This one hit in the air towards shallow left center. Rodriguez broke back and has a beat on that for out number one. That ball got in on Ronald's hands a bit. One man down. Dansby Swanson, the hitter. First a word from Texas Pete. Welcome to the tribe. The Texas Pete tried and true. Texas Pete, sauce like you mean it. 19 homer man, Dansby Swanson digs in. He's looking to get to 20 or more homers in back to back years. He owns the franchise record for RBIs for a shortstop. There's been only one other shortstop in franchise history with 20 homers besides Dansby. That was Dennis Menke back in the 60s. Watching what he's doing to these Braves hitters right now, Chip, it's almost they're going to have to pick out a spot that they want to go. Either look for the ball away or in and stay there and commit to that. Because right now he is going in and out, up and down, no rhyme or reason. If you're trying to cover the whole plate, that's what Gonzalez is trying to get you to do. So if you're looking out over that plate, look out. If there's anything in, either take it or try to foul it off. There's hardly been anything hit the other way by a Braves hitter left handed or right handed against Gonzalez yet. And so if you were in the box which side of the plate would you choose. I think right now to keep you on that change up I would look to shoot that ball to right center if I'm a right hander right now. And if he comes in only at 90 tell yourself I can foul it off worst case. Just like that the balls a little bit off the plate but still. These hitters are good enough they can go out and get that. Here comes another 2 2 for the Brave shortstop. Let's see, then by doing that, it makes you lay off that pitch. Dansby usually bears down two, two strikes. Popped up. Santana near the first baseline. He's got it. Two are out. So Austin Riley is the hitter. He bounced into a crazy double play in the first inning. Austin, the Braves MVP candidate, is also our Mr. Clean Magic Stats man today. What a year he's had leading the NL and extra base hits. 
Looks at 352 coming in today versus left-handed pitching, fourth best in the NL. Up to a good start, 255 through May 31st, but 297 cents. Trying to struggle back, it was like the moment he did not get elected to the All-Star game in that vote. It's like since then he turned a switch and has not stopped. Two balls, no strikes. Riley's double play in the first inning, a 4-3-6-4 twin killing. And now he's way ahead, three balls, no strikes. And Matt Olson, who again, six career homers against Marco Gonzalez, is lurking. Juan Grissom back on the dugout bench, talking things over with Michael Harris as Riley corks one. Deep left center field. That ball is way out of here into the bullpen. Austin Riley's 36th home run has tied this game. New life for Atlanta in the fourth. Now all those stats we just showed you continue to rise for Austin Riley. It's a perfect example. He took every single pitch that was in. He tried to come in. And then he got a pitch up out over the zone full extension and that was a no doubter. Deep to left center. So 90 RBIs for Riley. It's a tie game. And here is Matt Olson. Braves have been so good all year long Jeff with two outs. They do it again here in the top of the fourth. Olsen cracks that out of play to the left side. It's nothing in two. Braves began play today a half game behind the Mets. The Mets did beat Miami today. So we've got to win this game, win this series to stay a half game back entering action tomorrow night in San Francisco. And Olsen drives one toward left. And a diving catch made by Haggerty. That man again. He's been everywhere defensively in this series. The ball tailing away toward the corner. Haggerty snagged it and robs Olsen of an extra base hit. is brought to you by your local Ford dealer, Delta Airlines, keep climbing, and by Truist. When you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Braves have 78 wins this year when they hit a home run. Austin Riley ties it with a solo shot for number 36. And we've got a 1 1 score heading to the bottom of the fourth inning. Jake Odorizzi's pitched well. He's had traffic. He's had leadoff men in each of the first three innings. 
but he's allowed just the leadoff solo home run to Julio Rodriguez. So Vaughn Grissom trot back out to his spot at second base. Looks like he's okay, which is more good news. Yeah, I was going to say. Raleigh Santana and Frazier the Seattle hitters here in the fourth. Last night, that Raleigh with all that power, kind of a late version of Buster Posey, the Georgia native who starred for so many years with the San Francisco Giants. Right of Florida State. I said they've had some good catchers over the years. Kevin Cash. He's got a, his Tampa team playing well right now. Terry Kennedy. Two balls, two strikes. Leading off the fourth inning is Cal Raleigh. He struck out swinging in the first inning. The first inning, Jake got him on a changeup, a little bit up in the zone. Now 3 2 again. He just went fastball up. See if he tries to throw that changeup off that again. Missed inside another leadoff man is aboard. Second walk for Odorizzi. Santana's coming up. Santana rolled out his first time. He'd like a similar result here as the Braves play in a shift. It's Dansby Swanson the Braves shortstop playing on the first base side of second now. Adam Frazier will follow. One on, nobody out. Tie game. Austin Riley with the lone Braves hit. It was a homer. You know, one more thing just to go back thinking about the shift like we were talking about. I do love it though. Remember Dansby told us on the plane a couple months ago when we were talking about how he wants to be able to make more athletic plays do that. I was reading where Francisco Lindor was talking about that the other day, saying that, you know, I think you'll see some shortstops be able to make plays that people have not seen again in a while. No question. I, I think that's maybe the best part of it. And if you think about it, when's the last time you saw a middle infielder as athletic as Dansby Swanson or Albies or Grissom? Dive left or right, yeah. scramble to their feet, and throw a guy out. Not, not meant, not much. Does not happen. And if those are the most athletic players and most exciting players on the field, let them do it. Let them do it. I'm with you. One ball, one strike. And Santana Man. pushed off the plate. That was a pretty good pitch. Santana might have stolen ball two. And as a pitcher out there, that, that's the pitch you want. The flip count of 1 2 and 2 1 is big. Dangerous pitch now with. Carlos Santana in the box and Adam Frazier lurking. Three balls and a strike. Back to back walks begins the fourth inning.
told you about Frazier's heroics against the Braves in his big league career. He's got two aboard and nobody out trying to break a 1 1 tie. Both runs on solo home runs. Jeez. Another pitch at the bottom part of the zone, right over the middle. We got to give him one of them, right? It, well, that's yeah, you would think so. Mariners are not afraid to bunt. They do play National League style baseball from time to time. Let's see how Frazier handles the bat. There's the bunt, and it's rolled foul, even count. This year, Seattle. Has nine sacrifice bunts. Ironic, they're an American League team. The Braves, a National League team, don't have any. They're just built differently, these two offenses. And Frazier for the year has four of their nine sacrifice bunts. Last attempt pulls Riley in at the cut of the grass at third base. He's about six feet off the line. Even count two aboard thanks to back to back walks. No bunt that time and figure to be no bunt here with two strikes. I think that's something else that's going to come into play next year. More bunting. Yeah. yeah you probably will see it come back. One two pitch. Swing and a fly ball walloped right center field. Harris as far as he can go. It's off the wall. It ricochets back toward the infield and it's a relay race. Two runs are going to score. It's a triple and Seattle's back in front. Fastball middle middle up and Frazier drove in that gap. And then by the ball bouncing as hard as it did. Trip on you can see Santana there following Cal Raleigh. So Brian Snitker's out to have a word with Paul Emmo, the third base umpire. Not sure what that conversation was about. I don't think anybody. I think, I think they think Santana might have missed third. I saw him kind of stumble a little bit coming over. I was going to say it wasn't because he passed the base no. runner. But now Odorizzi is going to appeal at third base here. At least that's the looks of it. He'll have to come to the set position, step off the rubber, and throw to third base to see if Santana missed the bag. And he apparently did not. Let's take a look. Looks like from there he might have got the front part of the bag with that with his foot. So Frazier couldn't advance the runners with a bunt. He did better than that with a bases clearing triple. Nobody out. The infield in for the Braves with Jesse Winker up. Winker struck out his first time up. Seattle's had the leadoff man in every inning. Two of those guys have scored. They've received three walks. Two of those have come in. 
side after Riley tied the game at one Seattle has the lead right back. Mile high pop up won't get the job done. For Jesse Winker and Riley puts that away for out number one. Now there's one. J.P. Crawford the batter he bounced out to Austin Riley so he's 0 for 1. This guy was supposed to be the next big thing with the Philadelphia Phillies after Jimmy Rollins moved along. He's found a home here in Seattle he's done a nice job. And out of play. It's not surprising that J.P. Crawford began his career with another organization. If there's a trademark of Jerry Depoto, the general manager here, he is not afraid to make moves. No. Carlos Santana and J.P. Crawford for Gene Segura and two others. That was after the 2018 season. Mariners three Braves one one ball one strike. Lifted foul ground Riley gives chase Swanson joins him. Austin on the warning track makes another good play. So Odorizzi gets two pop outs with Frazier at third. Now there are two outs and Sam Haggerty the final hope. Boy if you could find a way to get out of this thing Chip with just two runs. Trust me the Mariners know right now they needed to try to find a way to push that in with the Braves offense. You got two it's not done yet. Haggerty popped out his first time but made a sprawling catch off Matt Olson to end the Braves fourth inning. Ball one strike. Nice one pitch away. Yeah, wouldn't this be something? A little. During a game, little different, you know, momentum streaks through the whole thing. Yes, they got the big two run triple, but if you can get out of this, a little bit of energy comes back in that Braves dugout, knowing your pitcher just stranded a guy at third with no outs. So one ball, two strikes for the Mariners left fielder, Sam Haggerty. Colin McHugh has begun to warm up. As you see, the pitch count has climbed quickly for Jake Odorizzi. He's thrown 70 of them. He's not yet out of his fourth inning. And he's had a lot of traffic. The 2 2. Base hit to left field. It's 4 1. That was unfortunate. I thought he was going to escape that right there. Two outs, two strikes. Credit Haggerty with a good piece of hitting this ball. You can see he just missed up over the zone. It's one thing to be able to climb the ladder. 
But when you don't throw 96, 97, you've got to set that pitch up. So two walks, two hits, three runs in the Seattle fourth. Contreras out to talk to Odorizzi. That'll buy a little more time for Colin McHugh in the bullpen. Now we go back to the top of the order and Julio Rodriguez is up for a third time. He's already homered and single. He's the first Mariner with a 20 homer 20 stolen base year since Mike Cameron. And with his big game Brian Snitker will go no farther with Jake Odorizzi. Who will go three and two thirds, it appears, in game three in Seattle. So the two leadoff walks to start the inning proved problematic. A triple and a two out single scores the third run of this fourth inning. And Brian Snicker and the Braves are in the bullpen early here at T Mobile Park. Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. And buy the Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. Braves baseball from Seattle is presented by our friends at Truist. The Mariners have jumped in front with a three run fourth inning. They have chased Colin McHugh. To the mound from the Braves bullpen. Jake Odorizzi started three and two thirds innings, five hits, four runs so far. Sam Haggerty is his responsibility, and here's Jeff where the value of a guy like Colin McHugh becomes evident. Eight innings out of him with three more games left on the road trip. Get this out, turn things back over to your offense, and see what happens the rest of the way. Yeah, if there's one thing we know with the Braves offense and their ability to hit the long ball, the three run, they can erase that really quick. With that being said, you need Colin to come in here and eat a couple innings and keep this game right where it's at. It may seem sacrilegious to say I worked here in Seattle 30 years ago and they had a pretty good center fielder. We went up in the Hall of Fame. Did they? What was his name? Yeah. <laughs> Ken Griffey Jr. Uh. It seems to me the love affair for this young kid is already at junior levels in Seattle. Yeah. And that is saying something. Listen to this place. Now think about this man. It's been 21 years since this team's been to the playoffs. It's been a long time here in Seattle. They got a good ball club. And he's a good young player. Julio Rodriguez was one year old when the Mariners made the postseason last. I don't know if he remembers that. <laughs> well, he's a great baseball fan. Anything's possible. Strike one, now strike two. What does that make you feel old? Julio Rodriguez, born December 29th, 2000. Like Michael Harrison Grissom, all of a sudden you start seeing date of birth and you see the two in there and you're like, huh. <laughs> two quick strikes for the Seattle center fielder, the pitch. Didn't 
chase it. Good try. Haggerty leads it first the pitch didn't chase that two balls two strikes. Our game is in such great shape with guys like Harris and Acuna and Albies and Rodriguez and the like coming up from the minor leagues at these young ages and doing what they're doing at this level. Great baseball players great baseball IQs. And fan favorites as McHugh puts out the fire ends Rodriguez's perfect day and Seattle settles for three in the fourth. We go to the fifth inning. It's 4-1 Mariners in front. This month and the Braves will be honoring the month by donating all proceeds from their charity auction to childhood cancer awareness. Auction items include signed jerseys bats and more from your favorite Braves players go to Braves.com slash charity auction to see the items available and to begin your bidding today. I know that's a charity near and dear to our pal Tom and Chris Glavin's heart and we hope you'll go online and bid generously. Yes. In these most important of months. Hope our good buddy Tom's watching today, maybe down in Florida on the porch. William Contreras leads off against Marco Gonzalez, and he corks one to straightaway center. Rodriguez turned the wrong way, and that costs him. That's off the wall. William around second is going to stop there. It's a leadoff double. What's funny is I don't think Rodriguez thought that ball was hit as hard as it was, Chip. And then he got turned around, as you said, the wrong way. Watch this. It was squared up. And by the time he got turned around, no chance to get that ball. And that's what you want when you give up three runs like that as an offense. If you can come back and answer with even one run, two runs, put her at a little pressure. Gonzalez already 69 pitches here in the fifth. Well, here's Vaughn Grissom. Let's see how that leg feels. His first at bat since colliding with Robbie Grossman. Yeah, that's a perfect situation for him to shoot that ball to right center. We saw him in Oakland do it in two games as good as anybody that I've seen do it in a long time. Six hits. Court and foul. Got the head out on that baby and didn't even count. There's a lot of baseball left in this game. 
And with the Thunder Jeff alluded to in the lineup for the Braves one through nine. This is not an easy or big lead for Marco Gonzalez by any stretch. And for the Mariners they're going to try to. I'm sure it's six seven start getting that bullpen going with an off day tomorrow try to use their gauntlet bullpen. On the ground to third that won't advance the runner. And Grissom got down the line with no trouble. And he's out number one. Had a scare with Vaughn before the game last night during batting practice. He was actually hit by a batted ball while he was out at second base. So had a tough little run of things. He's been a magnet of late here in Seattle. And now Michael Harris, the batter, he struck out his first time up. Broken bat, little pop, and Crawford's got that. And it's up to Marcel Ozuna with a runner at second, and now two outs. Just missed inside. One ball, no strikes. A hit gets you a run. It's a 4 1 Seattle game. Tyler Matzik is getting ready. A lot of switch hitters and left handers in this lineup for Scott Service and Seattle. Not much hit the other way by the Braves against this soft tossing left hander Marco Gonzalez. But he's been effective. He's allowed just two hits. And a 2 2 count. That's hammered a long way foul. And we'll try again with Marcel. Two balls, two strikes. Wind picking up just a bit, blowing toward the bullpens here on a comfortable 73 degree day. You bring the tying run to the plate. Well, the Braves have been one of the best in baseball this year with two out RBIs. Need one here. But it's not to be. That's popped up to the left side. And JP Crawford puts the squeeze on that. Atlanta gets a leadoff double can't edge closer middle of the fifth inning.
The Hyundai Sunday, presented by your local Hyundai dealers. That was a good looking ride on Hyundai Sunday, the yeah. Santa Cruz. Here in game three, Colin McHugh out for his first full inning with the two, three, four spots coming up for the Mariners. Mitch Hanniger will lead off. Hanniger 0 for 2, struck out his last time up. As we told you, the Mets already won today. They took care of the Marlins down in Miami. That's one of the big stories in baseball today. The other Albert Pujols passed a rod on the all time home run list. He hit another one today. Man what three away from 700 now 697. For Albert Pujols as the Cardinals beat the Pirates. This one driven a long way toward right that's near the pole Grossman as far as he can go. And at the last moment that curls foul. The ball's flying out of here right now too. Jumping. It's funny we walked into the press box today and so many members of our Bally Sports crew were saying to us, oh man, it's a hot one today. Yeah. In Seattle. It's 73 guys. Yeah. Smoking hot. Get no sympathy from us. No. Thought we were looking forward to that high 60s weather. It truly is the best this time of year, and that's what we figure to have in San Francisco starting tomorrow night. That's down and away for Hanniger. Two balls, two strikes. He's also a great pitcher of somebody up here in the press box. Yeah, Joe Simpson, former Mariner broadcaster. And a young Chip Carey right by the men's restroom. <laughs> Had to put that part in, didn't you? <laughs> Swing and a miss takes care of Hanniger. And that's out number one. It's a good pick though. Thanks. Yeah. It's, uh, it's always fun to come back here. Hard to believe that was almost 30 years ago. As McHugh a good pitch. He struck out the only two hitters he's faced so far today. And one out for a Eugenio Suarez who's walked and popped out. That pop out was the one where Grissom collided with Robbie Grossman. Well, are the Mariners going to make the playoffs? They've got a great shot. They've got a five game lead, I believe, over the fourth place team in the wild card chase. I think they got what the three. This is a big, tough homestand. But they had the White Sox, the Braves, Braves and the Padres. Padres and after coming. that, though, they got one of the easier schedules, I think, left in all of baseball. Down and away, ball two. Well, they have put on a great show this weekend. Beautiful ballpark, two good teams. Seattle will be the host for the All Star game next year. As that one's cut on a miss, two balls, two strikes. Boy, Collins got that pitch working yep. right now. Collins has been a great addition, man. He's a great dude, good pitcher, knows his role, and throws strikes. Funny because remember, the first two or three appearances this year as a Brave were not awesome. You know, and a lot of Braves fans didn't really, even though he's from Atlanta, didn't know a lot about him. And I said, he's a guy that if he gets going and gets the feel on that pitch, he's going to be a great addition. And that's what you had just said. It's been huge for that bullpen. 3 2 count. And this one hammered to center field and deep. Harris as far as he can go. Ooh. Leaping try, just missed it. And Suarez has hit another homer. That one a little bit on the outside. Suarez so strong. And look at this by Monty Mike. He almost made this play, Chip. Climbed the wall. Suarez now fourth home run in the last four games. Two of them to straightaway center. Yep. And so Suarez now with 29 home runs on the year. 
has extended the Seattle lead. It's five to one. Two more solo homers for Seattle and a two run triple. The big blows, part of their six hit attack today. And now it's two and two. Pulled a string on Cal Raleigh, who strikes out again. He's done that a lot in this series. Two men are out for Carlos Santana, but first a quick word from our friends at Delta. Delta, proud to be the official airline of the 2021 World Champion Atlanta Braves. Santana, the second of two walks leading off the fourth inning. He scored on Frazier's triple. And now he's got a hurt foot. You can practice for just about everything in a yeah. big league game except that, right? Yeah, you can see, like usual, you wear the protective gear. Oh. And it gets you right below where it's at, right on the side of that foot. Scott Service, a former catcher, says, yeah, you think that hurts. Yeah. Well, and usually, you know, Santana DHs a lot sometimes, too, today at first base. Mm -hmm. and Julio Rodriguez saying, I'm glad that didn't happen to me. Yes. Oh, one pitch base is empty two outs Seattle's added a run here in the fifth and a line drive right at Robbie and he handles that sinker and there is the third out of the inning a Eugenio Suarez though with Homer number 29 extends the Seattle lead. It's clubs and players as we pay tribute to those whose lives were lost on September 11th, 2001. 
honoring them with a pledge that we shall not forget. Hard to believe how our world changed 21 yeah. years ago today. What a great tribute they had before the game. The bagpipes with amazing grace. A tribute at Truist Park today as well. Even with the Braves out of town. 300 local Atlanta firefighters are climbing 2200 steps at Truist Park in the Memorial Stair climb benefiting the Terry Farrell Firefighters Fund of Georgia. Terry was a firefighter who died assisting the New York City Fire Department. 2200 steps at the ballpark symbolizing 110 flights of stairs that the Fire Department of New York took to rescue men and women in the World Trade Center attacks. And Robbie Grossman is out number one. So those men and women may be watching on the big screen back in Atlanta. We salute and honor you and thank you for your service. As we continue our road trip in Seattle with game three with the Mariners in front by a 5 1 score. Third time through the lineup, and I think this is going to be a batter by batter basis now for Gonzalez. As that pin's warming up down there for Seattle. Well, as you said, Scott Service has the luxury of an off day tomorrow. He can empty the pen and limit the innings for Gonzalez here with a four run lead if he so desires. But last night, Atlanta couldn't square up George Kirby in their first look at him. And today it's been pretty much the same against Marco Gonzalez, who isn't as overpowering as Kirby, but has been just as effective. He's really worked in all pitches to all quadrants. He said not, doesn't have overpowering stuff, but it's kept these Braves hitters off balance. Foul at third. We'll try again. A ball and two strikes. Braves hardly have played the Mariners in interleague play. That all changes. Not just the rule book next year, but the schedule. We'll see Seattle every year from this point forward. Next season, they'll come to Atlanta in mid May. As that's low, two balls, two strikes. I like that rule as much as any. Want to market the game's great stars and have guys like Acuna and Julio Rodriguez do their thing? Well, get them on TV and get them in the home parks every year, not yeah. every three or six. And that straightened up Acuna with ball three, full count. More than anything, too, you get a much more balanced schedule now. I think that's the other key to that. Yeah, fairer. Yeah. Line to short, and Acuna's retired. Again, got in on his hands just a bit. There is out number two. Braves are back home after our series with the Giants. Just a few home games are left for the Braves, and we hope you'll join us on September 20th when the first 15,000 fans get the Ron Washington Windmill Wash Bobblehead doll. And yes, that arm actually spins around for the Braves' great third base coach. This is a terrific gift and souvenir. And get your tickets at Braves.com slash promos September 20th when the Braves host the Nationals. Dansby to left. And that'll take care of the Braves in order in the sixth inning. Marco Gonzalez and the M's have a four run lead.
Half of inning number six, the Mariners in game three of the series lead by 5 1 score. Fans, let's cut to the chase. You don't want to miss a second of this September postseason push. Be here as the Braves pursue their fifth straight division title with several crucial NL East matchups coming up. Cut to the chase on Bally Sports South and Bally Sports Southeast is presented by Texas Pete Sauce. Like you mean it. Third pitcher of the day is on for Atlanta. It's Tyler Matzik's turn to go to work. He'll face the bottom half of the Mariners lineup. Colin McHugh went at inning in a third. One hit, one run. He struck out three men. No walks. And the home run ball. That was to a Eugenio Suarez. Adam Frazier doing Adam Frazier things against the Braves. He's two for two again against us today. A two out two run triple. It's going to be a two on. Triple for Adam Frazier with two RBIs. After he tried to bunt a couple times. Yeah. So they couldn't get him over. He sure as heck got him in. Sadly for his 34th and 35th RBIs. He's also singled. And stolen a base. That's a good player pesky hitter. Yeah. Especially against the break. And he's promptly ahead three balls no strikes. Tyler last pitched four days ago out in Oakland. First time he'd given up a run in a long time for the Braves. And now he's battled back to fill up the count for the Seattle second baseman. Matzik, very good number since coming back from the injured list with those shoulder problems. He's pitched to a 235 earned run average. Braves are taking extra special care of him with all the playoff work he did last season. And he misses upstairs with ball four, and Frazier's aboard for the third time in the game. That's the fourth walk issued by the Braves, the first. For Tyler Matzik. It is Hyundai Sunday here in Seattle, Washington, with Kelly Cole, Jeff Rancourt, Chip Carey with you. Braves have some work to do if they're to come back and win this series. We split the first two games of the set, but the Mariners, with three runs in the fourth and one in the fifth, have broken what was a 1 1 tie. And here's Winker, Jesse 0 for 2. Talk about a big sports weekend in Seattle. You've got yeah. the world champions making their lone visit to face the Mariners. And the Seahawks play tomorrow night. With Russell Wilson coming back to town. Popped up. Olsen and Contreras. And Matt calls off the Braves catcher. And there is out number one. Oh, good job by Matt. That's a tough play. That ball was hit really high, and it was starting to kind of slice back towards the field. Crawford, the hitter, he's grounded out to third. He's popped out to third. Rams playing their final game against the American League teams today. Great turnaround for Atlanta in 2022 against the junior circuit. At the moment, Atlanta 13 and 6 against American League clubs in the dirt. One ball, no strikes.
good fastball. That's what Rick Granite said about uh, Tyler to me on the last homestand. He's getting closer and closer to just letting her eat, letting yep. it rip. And that was a, as you said, good fastball. Yep. Well placed. And another one, 94 miles an hour. Nothing wrong with that. No. It's one and two. Line drive the other way with two strikes. And that's going to split the gap. Frazier around third is going to get waved home. There'll be no relay. Boy, what a piece of hitting after two good fastballs. <clears throat> Throws him a slider. And you can see how quick this outfield is to grass. We yeah. saw that last night. Julio Rodriguez hit that ball to right center last night. And it took off, and right here, we can see Crawford, good piece of hit. And to watch this thing hit the grass, and it just goes. Another time where Michael Harris probably thought he could cut that ball off and had to go all the way on an angle to the wall just to get it. So we say it all the time when it happens to the Braves if you give good teams extra outs and extra opportunities more often than not. They're going to make you pay for them. That has certainly happened in today's game. The Braves have walked four Seattle hitters three of them have scored. Including Adam Frazier who plates his second run of the game here in the sixth inning Mariners six Braves one we're in the sixth inning. Dansby will pick out the hop he wants. And Sam Haggerty is retired two outs. And here comes Julio Rodriguez again. He's certainly wearing the right number for a guy with the kind of power he's displayed in this series. Yeah. No one in Seattle history will ever wear number 11. That's for their great third baseman and designated hitter Edgar Martinez. Nor will anyone ever wear number 24 for Ken Griffey Jr. Those are the two retired numbers for the Mariners. Of course, Jackie Robinson retired by everybody. And among position players, that is. And did they retire Randy Johnson's too? Maybe not yet. Probably should. <laughs> right? You'd think. One ball, one strike. Ichiro 2, the pitch. He's had a great ceremony for Ichiro here earlier this year. Yeah, he's been back quite a bit. Yeah. Here. He was here in this series. Yeah. He's still shagging balls and throwing <laughs> 90 miles an hour out in the outfield. Well, the game's great. Was part of that 116 win team for the Mariners, the last one they had that made postseason play. That one skips away from Contreras, and Crawford will move up on a ball in the dirt. It's a wild pitch. That ball just spiked right there, and Contreras did everything he could to try to just knock it down.
So another runner 90 feet away for Seattle, but there are two outs. Colin McHugh got Rodriguez up in the strike zone in the fourth inning. Let's see if Matzik goes there here. Nope, ball four. So Matzik piling up the pitches. Seattle's going to go to the bench. They'll take down Mitch Hanniger. Taylor Trammell is going to come on and face Matzik here. Great lefty lefty matchup here with first and third two outs. <laughs> Taylor missed a lot of time with a hamstring problem about six weeks. Him speed is his game. Well, they're missing another kid with some Georgia ties, Kyle Lewis. Remember him? Yep. Shallow high school right down the road. Yeah, Mercer University. He yep. had some knee problems, and then just as soon as those started feeling better, he was sidelined with concussion problems. He's down at AAA in Tacoma, trying to make his way back. Sorry we missed him. Trammell skies one back our way foul. It's a ball and two strikes. Well, the Mariners to this point have been as good as advertised. They're pitching a sub two ERA since late August. Their bullpen has been excellent. They've been on a similar win pace as the Braves over the last five, six weeks. They have used their home field advantage here in game three. Like I said, largest crowd of the night last night. Another pack house today. I said a lot of those, though, two brave fans up here. We saw Thuns walking home last night. See if they can get out of this and then go put a few on the board and give them something to cheer about. Well, we'll have the three, four, five men coming up in the seventh. The one two pitch. And he had Tremel off stride, and Matt Olson in foul ground should handle that. And 25 pitches for Tyler Matzik. Seattle adds to their lead. It's 6 1 Mariners after six innings. USA Insurance committed to the military community.
Robert Pujols rescued the Cardinals today. Let's see if somebody for the Braves can lead a comeback here down five runs and nine outs left. Taylor Trammell will remain in the game. He will play right field. And the new pitcher is on for Seattle. And that new pitcher's name is Matt Brash. Another acquisition from the San Diego Padres by the Seattle organization. He made his debut this year earlier against the White Sox back in April. Lost the scoreless seventh versus the White Sox last time out. Matt Brash, a native of Ontario, Canada. And let's take a look at our StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. Austin Riley, 36 of the season. Look at that, all the way deep into the Brewers' bullpen. 3 0 fastball. At the time, tied it up. So 74 extra base hits for Austin Riley, 36 homers, now 90 runs batted in. Atlanta needs a big inning. They've got a run on two hits. It's a good arm. Back to back 99 mile an hour fastballs. One out, Austin Riley down on strikes. Pretty impressive. 99 and then a 89 mile per hour slider. So one away from Matt Olson, who is 0 for 2. Marco Gonzalez, six innings of one run, two hit ball. He's in line for his 11th victory. Another huge crowd in Seattle of over 45,000 today. The fifth sellout of the season. 45,245 are here today. Mariners got things started with a leadoff home run from Julio Rodriguez. Austin Riley tied it at one in the fourth. Seattle, though, with three in their half of that inning, one in the fifth, one in the sixth. And they enjoy a 6 1 lead. Two and two for the Braves first baseman. He tried to shoot a backdoor slider down that third baseline. Right now you got to get some runners on. A little pressure on them. Well like the Braves the Mariners very proud of their relief corps. Yeah. Not easy work coming back against these guys. Still two and two. Three. 
Full count. Good battle by Matt. Sent off some tough sliders. Took that fastball up. And a good at bat for Olsen. That's been a very patient hitter for the Braves, and there's a start with one out. And William Contreras is the batter, but first a word from our friends at Zaxby's. Try Zaxby's chicken finger plate with tongue torch, Zax sauce, or any of our sauces. Well, all day we've seen the Mariners take advantage of some walks at the Braves pitchers. See now if the Braves can flip it on them, pay them back. That's the first walk they issued in the game, and that's really been, again, their calling card. Jeff, we mentioned it last night. Yeah. They don't hurt themselves with bases on balls. Their starters have walked two or fewer men now in 24 straight games. They are around the plate. And just like that, it's 0 2 for Contreras, who doubled off the wall, leading off the fifth inning. Braves have a homer and a double. That's it. Breaking ball takes care of Contreras. Two out. On is our Georgia natural gas impact player. As we said, he's had a great road trip, but he's had a super week. Need some of that magic here with two strikes and two outs. And a bounding ball. He's rolled foul. It's 0 and 2. And putting up a fight here with Matt Brash, the second pitcher for Seattle. Good sign, too, though. Even though he grounded out last time, seeing Grissom run down to yeah. first base would look like no pain. Well, when he ran into Robbie Grossman, Grossman need him in the five. Grissom's foot was planted. You could see the knee give just a bit. Yep. Worst fears were he was really hurt. And after he Got his bearings on the turf. He immediately jumped up into a catcher's crouch and then was able to walk and then jog off the field without any help whatsoever. And obviously, if there was any concern about his long term viability, he'd be out of the lineup. And that play happened in the third inning. Here we are in the seventh. Brash. Strikes out the side. The Mariners are in front six to one. Here before a packed house, the fifth sellout of the year at T Mobile Park. Atlanta wrapping up our three game series with the Mariners. And as they do on their home Sundays, Seattle fans will be entertained with a stirring rendition of God Bless America. Today's guest singer is 10 year old Yolanda G, who looks as lovely as can be. She is ready to go on this cloudy Sunday in Seattle as the Braves and Mariners wrap up our three game series today. God. 
God's bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her, hands guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans. Watch with fall. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet. Yolanda G, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. in attendance here at T-Mobile Park for the wrap up of our weekend set and as disappointing as the game is to this point here's something that's encouraging to see Jeff Jackson Stevens finally back on a big league mound. Yeah, I talked to him the other day during the off day and saying how excited he was to get back after taking that one to the head in St. Louis which was amazing still the fact that he walked off the mound. Hopefully for him he can come out here and have a clean inning maybe even two and help us save this bullpen. And Eugenio Suarez greets him first and Stevens delivers a strike. I know this. We helped him in his recovery with that giant chili dog he consumed in the bleacher game at the ballpark in Atlanta. If that can't get you back I don't know what can. <laughs> <laughs> but it truly was a scary moment. He was telling us uh, after the game the other day during the day off. He was dazed in St. Louis. Yep. And understandably so. And up and away for Suarez. Yeah, Hanniger went out with a lower back injury. We we're wondering between because they brought the lefty on to yeah. face Matzik. Sharply hit. Olsen handles the short hop. And that'll take care of Suarez for out number one. Well, that's what every manager's fear is this time of year. You're in playoff contention. The Seattle team's not going to win the Western Division. The Astros have too big a lead. They are, however, in great position to maybe win the top wild card. But you got to stay healthy. No, for sure. And I think what well, with Tampa losing today and Toronto, I think if they win today. That's I think it's all three bunched up like that's dead it. even for those three wild cards. And as you said, I think uh, after San Diego, the Mariners have a pretty yeah. 
favorable schedule the rest of the way in. But we've seen it before even just because it's favorable. Doesn't mean they're wins. If anything sometimes those can be the most dangerous teams you play. Well after that series with San Diego. The Mariners have a long road trip. Angels Oakland Kansas City. They finish with Texas. Oakland. And the Tigers. Cal Raleigh to center that'll be the second out so. None of the remaining teams after the San Diego series are even close to being in playoff contention for Scott service so it's there for the taking but that's the old cliche you don't play the games on paper you got to go win between the wide lines. And if they do get there it will end a two decades long playoff drought for his baseball mad city in Seattle. Here's Santana he's walked and scored today. Jackson looks good. Good fastball, 95. Popped up. Dansby drifts out. He says he's got room and does. And welcome back, Jackson Stevens. Three up, three down. First one of those turned in by the Braves staff today. Maine at Boston College coming up Saturday at 7.30 Eastern over on Bally Sports South and the Bally Sports app. ACC football on Bally Sports South is presented by your local Ford dealer. Do you know if there's a trophy for those two teams if they square off? You know, like the Golden Boot or something like that? Yeah, it's probably like a big lobster thing. Yeah, or like the brass like lobster. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Should be a great game. Can't wait for that next Saturday on Bally Sports. As the Braves try to mount a comeback with two innings left here in Seattle. This is Eric Swanson. We saw Swanson in the eighth inning last night. He was perfect. Matt Brash struck out three hitters of the four he faced in the seventh inning. So he will have Swanson, Harris, Ozuna, and Robbie Grossman. And ball one. 
misses upstairs. Well, you look at the way this Seattle team is put together, and we're only talking about them because we see them so infrequently. I think they've got a good shot to advance into the Yale playoffs, yeah. win a series, maybe two or more. There's a shot hit to right field by Michael Harris. That's going to leave the park. So there's a start. Michael Harris has his 17th home run and his second of the series. Two solo homers for the Braves today. Yeah, Money Mike had to see if Rodriguez was going to hit one. I had to keep pace. He pulls his hands in this one beautifully. It lines it 106 off the bat right into the right field seats. For the best coverage in the game, that is your T-Mobile coverage cam. Michael had that one covered beautifully. Yep. So we got one of them back. It's six to two. Nobody on or out. As we pointed out earlier in the game, this bottom part of the Braves order continues to do good offensive work. 215 RBIs from the seven, eight, nine spots in the Braves batting order this year. Another base runner or two, and Scott Service may have to go get somebody else here in the eighth inning. His bullpen is working. Center cut. It's two and two. Braves have been playing great baseball all month. Can they complete a comeback today? They're down just four runs. They've got six outs left. I don't put anything past this team. No, and even if you can put one or two more here, you just make it where one guy gets on in the ninth and you can bring up the tying run. Start. Homer and a walk. Here we go. Robbie Grossman is scheduled next. Boy, you got the right part of the lineup coming up too, partner. Well, that's what makes what the number nine, eight, and seven men have done so important. That's what's given Acuna, Swanson, Riley, and others all those RBI chances. So just the second walk of the day for a Mariner pitcher. And it brings up Robbie, who has struck out and grounded out. Keep the line moving here. Braves were down a run last night. Couldn't seal the deal. Fell three to one. They're down four now. And have Acuna waiting on deck after the ninth place hitter, Robbie Grossman, bats here in the eighth. What's well, a good pitch, isn't it? Split finger. That was a heck of a pitch. One moment it's there and next the moment comes the ball just parachutes into the dirt. Fly ball well hit towards center but that's playable for Rodriguez. Grossman barreled that baby up but he didn't fly out back to first Ozuna and Ronald's coming up with one in one on and one out. He's going to make a change. I don't think he's going to let. Just wants to see the top of this lineup. Not with the offensive bridge, what they can do to you in a hurry. So we won't get the always exciting Swanson versus Swanson matchup. 
as the Braves get a run on a Michael Harris solo home run. Top of the order coming up. The GMC Sierra Heavy Duty Truck. Xfinity. Supercharge your home with supersonic Wi-Fi. Unbeatable internet. Only from Xfinity. And by Georgia Natural Gas. Live the greener life. Beautiful look at Mount Rainier here in the great state of Washington where the Braves trail 6-2 in inning number 8. The Braves are in the drive for five, their fifth straight NL East division title. They need you at Truist Park this month. Vaughn Grissom and the Braves take on the Nats September 16th, excuse me, September 19th through the 21st. I beg your pardon. Don't miss out on one of the final home series of the regular season. Get your tickets online at Braves.com. Andres Munoz back out there for Seattle. We saw him in the seventh inning last night. He pitched a clean seventh. Here he'll face Ronald Acuna Jr., who is 0 for 3 today. Yeah, we saw Munoz last night. The big fastball, the electric fastball at the same time, threw 80% sliders last night. So we'll see how he attacks this part of the lineup. He came in last night to face Olsen with Darno. Munoz towing the third base side of the pitching plate. And another breaking ball starts the sequence. Ronald has a ton of room on the right side of the diamond where Santana plays in front of Marcelo Zuna. Frazier close to the second base bag for Seattle. And this one hammered toward the gap in right center field, but Trammell is there. He'll make the catch. And back to first is Marcel. Two men are out. And Dansby, the hitter, he is 0 for 3 today. There's the triple digit gas. And the bullpen is a strikeout crew over a strikeout per inning pitched. Slow roller toward Crawford at short. He'll flip to second where Frazier was standing. And that will retire the side. Michael Harris, an eighth inning homer, makes it a 6 2 game.
Global news this morning. That is Anthony Farvaro. You might recall Anthony pitched for the Braves in 2011 to 2014. He retired from the major leagues in 2016 to become a Port Authority officer in New York. He was on his way to the World Trade Center ceremonies today where he was involved in a wrong way collision with a reportedly intoxicated driver and Anthony lost his life today. Anthony was a wonderful pitcher, a terrific person, and he leaves behind his lovely wife and four children. You know, one thing, when you're part of this organization, you're part of it for a long time, and your family, and I was talking to Eddie Perez today about it. I didn't play with Anthony, but I met him a few times. He just brought his son when we were up in New York two weeks ago. It's just heartbreaking, man. Beyond awful. And so, like, it's so cliche, and it's almost meaningless to say, but that's all we can offer. Our thoughts, yeah. prayers, and sympathies to the entire Barbaro family over a, such a senseless and tragic loss today. Adam Frazier is up for Seattle in the eighth inning. Dylan Lee is the next Braves pitcher after Jackson Stevens perfect one two three seventh. Braves have three outs left with the heart of the order coming up in the ninth. They trail it six to two. And fouled away by Frazier versus Dylan Lee. Dylan's had a little bit of rest. He last pitched five days ago. That came in. One of our games against the Oakland Athletics. And no swing evens up the count. Another big story in baseball was Mike Trout. He was trying to homer in a seventh consecutive game today. He did not. Oh, man. Send him back to the minors. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ken Griffey, Dale Long, and Don Mattingly's record of eight. Games in a row with a homer will stay intact as this one skied towards center field. And Adam Frazier is retired for out number one. Before Jesse Winker comes up, here's a quick word from Truist. Tim always offered the best advice. Hit it nice and firm. Today, Tim is a teammate at Truist, where you can get personalized insights right on the app. Winker 0 for 3 today. And Sky out of play. Nothing in one. Six runs, seven hits for Seattle. They've committed the game's only error. That was by J.P. Crawford. In fact, that was on the first batter of the game. For the Braves, runs and hits have been tough to come by. Two runs. Three hits. Two of the hits solo homers. One by Riley, one by Harris. And now William Contreras will put the squeeze on that, and Winker has an offer. And here is Crawford, who knocked in a run with a double his last time up. Time for a truest look ahead. We will move on to San Francisco for our three game series with the. San Francisco Giants our coverage starts tomorrow at 9 Eastern on Valley Sports South and the Valley Sports app raise baseball as always is presented by Truist. Two night games then a day game then the flight back to Atlanta then we open up a series at home. On September the 16th. Phillies will be in for three. The Nationals are in for three. Then we go right back on the road to Philadelphia and Washington. The final three home games still looking to be hugely important with yeah. the Mets. And then the Braves will wrap up regular season play. Three games on the road against the Marlins. And if you're holding tickets for the October 2nd game, please note that will now be a night game. So check your listings for. 
where to catch that one. 0 2 pitch. And foul back to the netting. Well, it's good to see Jackson Stevens have a good eighth, uh, seventh inning, and now Dylan Lee right now looks very sharp coming in. Even count for the Seattle shortstop. Looking ahead to the ninth inning, get your rally caps out, Braves fans. We've got Riley Olson and Contreras scheduled. We're down four. It's a 6 2 game. Fighting him right now. Getting late, late swing. So for Dylan, that's why he's sticking with that fastball. You don't really want to speed up his bat. You throw that slider, it's got to be a good one down and away. And him off stride. Good pitch. Ozuna in left is going to make the grab. And that takes care of J.P. Crawford and the Mariners. Last call for the Braves. We head to the ninth. Jeep Ram and by USAA this Patriot Day game is brought to you by USAA insurance committed to the military community statue of Ken Griffey Jr. outside T-Mobile Park and a little rain has begun to fall and so the roof begins to close as we get you set for what we face in San Francisco tomorrow our Hyundai inside the numbers feature there are your starting pitchers Jeff for a big game one of a series. Yeah Spencer last time he got the ball we saw at the first inning was one really battered Brian Snicker Tolts away from being done and ended up throwing six beautiful innings as a snit Tolts on the point probably could have gone the rest of the way he was so comfortable and Alex Cobb obviously getting the ball for the Giants in a Big series there for three games in San Fran. So for the first time in this series, we'll see the roof begin to close, and that's what makes this ballpark so unique, Jeff, as you mentioned. It is really just a, a canopy. It's not a fully enclosed facility no. here in Seattle. But when the inclement weather strikes, they can cover up the proceedings and keep on keeping on. 
as the Mariners go to their bullpen. This is Diego Castillo his 51st game and he'll face Austin Riley to get things going Riley with his 36th home run is now up to 90 runs batted in. I remember doing a game early in the history of this facility and they had a roof problem <laughs> started raining and the roof got stuck and there's a guy walking along the concourse and I can't remember where the control room is but he was on the walkie talkie and the look on his face was well, I think I hit the right button <laughs> to close the is roof. It my fault. Yeah. But the roof sits on an elevated it's like a little train thing. Almost, that's a good way of putting it. Elevated yep. track on both sides of the stadium, and it just very slowly moves and covers the playing surface here. Very unique design. And with the sometimes quirky weather in the Pacific Northwest, it's a perfect way to make sure the games get played. 3 0 to Austin Riley. And a four pitch walk gets things started for Atlanta. As you saw from Castillo he's not afraid to issue ball four and in a four run game the Braves have a rally started. Here's Matt Olson. Now that's where you wonder sometimes if it comes back to haunt a manager you can see you already got Seawall warming up down in the pen so you're trying to bring Castillo in to get three outs make an easy inning but at the same time with this middle part of the order. By the time you face three batters it could very easily be bases loaded when you bring your closer in and as you've said and as we know it's not like when you get to the bottom of the order that's exactly a walk in the park. No that's what I mean. Seventh place hitter Harris has the home run today. We all know Azuna and Grossman have that power. And a good take for Matt Olson. Let me ask you this. We've had bright sunshine natural light. What's it like hitting in this park with the roof closing or closed. Well, you can just tell as it's slowly closing. You know it's just getting darker and darker. You know, it's still very good lighting. Once it totally gets closed it'll be fine. But it is different because you've played all three games with the roof wide open mm -hmm. until this part now. After a quick meeting Castillo delivers a strike. We need base runners any way we can get them. Three hits, three walks for Atlanta's batsman. And now Olsen, who earned the first walk from any Mariner pitcher his last time up, is way ahead in the count here. I'm trying to throw that split, get Matt to chase. One thing you don't see Matt usually chase outside the zone. He was on his way to first base. Instead, it's a full count. Ball four back to back walks in the ninth inning.
Good patience by Olsen. Now William Contreras, who has one of the Braves' three hits. It was a double off the center field fence. And this is where the three batter minimum gets you. Usually now, this is a safe situation for your closers with the tying run on deck, but he has to face Contreras at least. Cuts off the outside corner, strike one. Braves trying to give a sellout crowd a finish in the ninth inning. We're down four, two on, nobody out. Little number hit to the right side. It's a race to the first base bag, and Castillo wins it. The runners, though, advance to second and third. That cost the Braves one out. Does here. Castillo is six for six in saves. This is not a safe situation. The lead was too big when he entered the inning. Cannot pitch yourself into one of those save chances. Well, he's got plenty of experience with the Rays. Close down there. But he's on a batter by batter situation here. The pitch in the dirt. Nice stop by Raleigh. Ball one, strike one. Michael Harris homered his last time up. He's on deck. And fouled at third. It's one and two. Two outs. On strike zone got a little big there, and it's up to Michael to keep the game alive. You get another base runner, you bring the tying run to the plate. And we all know Marcel, plenty of power to tie this thing up if you bring him. Oh. Ball was four or five inches in off the plate. They've thrown that pitch a lot in this series. Nowhere near ball three. They say the 27th out is the toughest one to get. Castillo's proving that to be true here in the ninth inning. Harris. Can be very selective here the pitch. Man, come on. We got the inside corner and the outside corner. And now 
the pitch of decision coming up. Wow. Swing and a drive. How far is that baby going? My, oh, my, off the third deck. A two-homer game for Harris. That was an absolute bomb. All the way off the glass up there. Just right over the middle of the plate. Watch where this ball went. Second part of that facade up there. So Castillo walks the first two batters. He gets the next two outs. He went three and two to Harris, and Michael just made it a one run game in the ninth. Game with this shot. Six to two. Three two count. Got to stay right over the inner part of the plate. Look at that follow through. And we keep talking about rookie of the year and vice versa. Two home runs helps out. And not to mention, gets the Braves back now. One swing. And they're going to bring up Eddie Rosario here and take a chance with the matchup. Which features Paul Seawald who came on and got the save last night. Well we've said it so many times the Braves don't always win but they always give you a finish. They're doing that today. Down to their last out are down a run. And you have to wonder with this game six to two if Seawall was even thinking about getting ready in this game. We'll see how sharp he is. He wasn't but when that walk happened he got up right away. I wonder if they were going to bring him in to face Harris or Grissom. They did not. Well we've said it all series long. Playoff atmosphere. Yep. You've got it in the ninth. Got away with center cut at the knees. And now the Braves again down to their last strike. Oh. 
Line drive, base hit. Rosario with a pinch hit single, and the Braves bring the go ahead run to the plate. Now they're giving themselves an opportunity. Beautiful piece of hit and fastball up in the zone. He just goes up and gets it. Not a lot of room over there with that shift, but you can see the guy's pumped up. No, there's life. Grossman with a home run here Friday night from this side of the plate. And a new set of strikes. The Braves, Harris and Rosario, down to the last strike. Both have hits. Tying run at first, winning run, or go ahead run if you wish, at the plate with two outs. No head to head history between Robbie Grossman and Paul Seawall. Swing drive, Robbie Grossman unloads, and the Braves have taken the lead. I don't believe it. Wow. Look at Wash. He even gave him the right arm that time, the bad wing. This place can't believe it. In the ninth with two outs. Seven six. Braves lead it. Wow. Wow. I don't ever like to say I'm stunned because you're never stunned. But that's stunning. That's three in a row. Home run by Harris. Rosario two strikes. Base hit. And then Robbie Grossman. Two walks, two homers, and five runs in the inning. And so now you look ahead to the bottom of the ninth inning. Seattle will have the nine, one, and two hitters coming up. Remember, Hanniger had to come out of the game with a back problem. He or his spot will be the third for Seattle. And Acuna gets hit and takes exception. Ronald, he's not trying to hit you, he's just giving up the lead. He doesn't want any more base runners. And here's Grossman's. Turn around Homer. He threw the pitch, the same pitch before. That other one that he got in swing miss was on the inner half. This one, too much of the plate. And Grossman golfs this thing in the right center. Wow. Now the umpires are gathering here. Ronald obviously thought there was some purpose behind that pitch from Seawald. I, I can't imagine what that would be. And I think they've come to that conclusion too. He missed his spot badly. That ball backed up and got Acuna on the elbow. Maybe that's what Ronald uh, took exception to. I missed that bad. We'll tell you this. He'd like to believe not, but he missed his spot by a long ways there for a guy. That ball was right out of his hand. Either way, you know what? The Braves got the sweet part of it right now with the 7 6 lead. Well, sometimes you see a man get hit and he wants to take his revenge on the base pass. I'm okay with that, but be smart here. You right. want to give the, you want to keep this momentum. You can find a way to get one or two more. Boy. One ball, no strikes. The 
Braves have scored five in the ninth. Kenley Jansen's getting ready for the bottom half of the inning. Another run or two would not hurt. One ball, one strike. Bottles running. Dansby swinging a miss. The throw to second is going to be late. And so this sets up beautifully for the Braves as Ronald has his 27th steal. Who better, Jeff, with two strikes and two outs at the plate than Dansby Swanson? Yeah, and you want revenge. That's the best revenge you can get right there. Get get the second right here. Get a good secondary lead. And if Dansby ropes one, get another run. Tack on. They haven't seen much of Seawalt, but they saw him last night. Including Dansby Swanson, who struck out. He's worked a 2 2 count now. And this is where you talk about managers getting asked questions sometimes, decisions. I remember I said it before the inning even started. In a 6 2 game like that, you got a day off tomorrow. I know you, you see, has had good numbers, and I know he's done good, but if Sea Walls are closer, sometimes you wonder at this point in the season. The more that gate opens, the more opportunity you have to find a guy that's having a bad day. Yep. And Atlanta's taking advantage and try to add on to a 7 6 lead. The pitch. On the ground, slowly toward Crawford. The throw to first is just in time. What an incredible inning for Atlanta. Two walks got it started. Then with two outs and two strikes. Michael Harris hits a mammoth three run homer. Eddie Rosario followed with a pinch hit single. And then Robbie Grossman with a huge go ahead homer for the Braves, who take a 7 6 lead into the bottom of the ninth. That's a finish for the Braves, wouldn't you? Five in the ninth inning, Jeff. And that is an historic frame. It's been over two years since the Braves have scored that many runs in the ninth inning. This sellout crowd in Seattle is stunned as Michael Harris and Robbie Grossman hit ninth inning home runs. Now, Kenley Jansen will go to work. The Atlanta Relief Corps has retired seven straight hitters. Kenley has the nine, one, and two hitters coming up for the Mariners. Boy, you get three outs. You talk about stealing this game. You know, and there's so many things we come back and look at. Little things here and there that this team's done. Stevens, Dylan Lee keeping this game at 6-2 to give yourself a chance. And what a great work by Michael Harris. There it is again, the bottom of the lineup for the Atlanta Braves. Good call. We gave it to you earlier. What 22 home runs 86 RBIs from the nine hole spot. There's Grossman again. Another two run homer. Three homers for the Braves in their last two at bats. And now Kenley Jansen. Who has been excellent on this road trip. Two innings and four strikeouts. 
One other defensive change for Atlanta. We'll get to that after Sam Haggerty sees the first pitch from the Braves closer. And he tried to bunt. Guillermo Heredia has taken over in left field for Marcelo Zuna. Again, the Mariners will bunt. They need a base runner and then turn things over to the top of their order. Haggerty, an RBI single. What a game to wrap up this series. Bunt try. Riley sniffs it out. Gloves, grabs, guns. Got his man. One out. I'll tell you what. I don't mind that the first first pitch. You're trying to drop the surprise on him. Austin Riley was playing closer than the bag on the grass right there, and that ended up being an easy play for him. Even at the perfect bunt, it's tough. And now you got the other young center fielder coming up saying, "Ah, oh, you hit two. Let me see what I can do." Well, he's hit one. Yep. And he's reached base three times. Julio Rodriguez. Ty France has grabbed the bat. He's on deck. The Braves relievers have set down eight straight. And Jansen gets ahead, strike one. Riley hugging the line at third as Kenley just missed. This game was looking out of reach. The Braves struggling so mightily to muster any kind of an offensive attack through seven innings. It scored one run and had two hits. They've taken a 7 6 lead and need two more outs. Swing, fly ball, well hit. Tie game. Unbelievable game. Location. Trying to go away, crept back over the middle of the plate. And Rodriguez lines this thing. Let me tell you what right now, I don't know how this game's going to end, Chip. Hopefully we're getting a Braves W still. But I think you can give both these guys the rookie of the year after today. Huh. Yeah, let's. Michael Harris and Julio Rodriguez. Uh, let's engrave the trophies and hand them out after the yes. game. Wow, what performances. And so it's 7 7 right. in the ninth. You know what? You got to bear down right here. Yeah. You got to get your team back out there. One advantage if you can get out of this, look, Mariners have used the bulk of their good part of their bullpen. Braves still got a Glacius mentor. So Ty France, he's a big time power hitter. Eighteen homers for France as he bats in the ninth with one out seven seven game popped up Riley playing deep at third comes in and puts the squeeze on that and here's Suarez you can't look no, past this guy I mean you said it earlier in the series these teams both are a lot these, alike both these teams are power hitting teams yeah. they hit home runs. Braves today with four home runs. Mariners with what? Two or three? Three home runs. So get this out right here and again turn it back over to that Braves offense. Which will feature Austin Riley leading off. Suarez with two outs.
the belt and Suarez couldn't pull the trigger. Jeff, that neither team deserved to lose. The Mariners with two home runs in the bottom of the ninth walk us off. Did this hit Heredia's glove or was it the top? I, I want to. Yeah, it went off the top of the bullpen. But two teams built on power, and unfortunately today, Chip, Mariners were up last. They were the home team. One thing we figured out when they close the roof, the ball this flies. Place becomes an airport. Eight home runs combined the two teams. And this one, look, it's gonna it's gonna sting a little bit to come back the way the Braves did, take that lead. And then two home runs. Tough loss, man. Tough loss. But like anything, you have to find a way to put it behind you and go tomorrow. But this one stings. There's no other way about it. So Seattle gets two homers from Rodriguez. They get two homers from Suarez, who now has 30 of them on the year. And Atlanta, which took a 7 6 lead in the ninth, couldn't seal the deal. And they dropped two out of three to the Mariners here in Seattle. What a big league ball game! Unbelievable, man. So we will gather our thoughts and get you ready for Braves Live presented by Xfinity. And Jeff and I will see you with the Braves in San Francisco as we kick off a three game series with the Giants. Spencer Strider and Alex Cobb will be the starting pitchers. Mariners win it 8 7 in the bottom of the ninth inning. We'll wrap it all up for you on Braves Live presented by Xfinity next week. Thank you for joining us on this September 11th from Seattle.